Salutations, and my most sincere satisfaction to spend some seconds with you. My name is Sean, and this is my sanctuary, my sacred sanctum. And in this secluded, sacrosanct solitude of science girls, I, your sassy, sarcastic, sometimes sappy, and seldom saucy, sardonic soprano, do hope to shepherd you through a splendid session of literary scrutiny. We will scour pages, share scorn, and enjoy scintillating sensations of semantics on this journey of self-discovery and salubrious soul-searching to save ourselves from this spherical, sucky world of scurrilous scoundrels, sanguine savages, and scathing Sadducees safeguarding a segregated schism. And in so doing, we might find salvation and some sense of sanity and scope. Anyway, this sonorous soliloquy has certainly stayed its welcome, so I shall end it simply by ceasing this sanctimonious segment and get straight to the subject at hand. Recently, I read The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. I found out about this book from the Top 1000 list by James Mustich, A Thousand Books to Read Before You Die. I had never heard of it or the author before, and as is my custom, I went into a blind not knowing anything about it. I didn't read the back of the book or anything. I just like to start the book and let the author either pull me in with her writing or not. Okay, first off, I want to go through this as quickly as I can because I can really talk about this one thing for like 10 or 15 minutes and I don't want to do that. No one wants me to do that. My first thought reading this book, the first 50 or 100 pages, is I came across a lot of politically incorrect language dealing with all sorts of things. There was deaf people, black people, I think there was politically incorrect words for Japanese people or Chinese people, for Jews, for midgets or little people, whatever the correct word is. Anyway, I was keeping my mind on this, trying to figure out exactly what to make of this politically incorrect language, because the book was published, I think, right around 1939 or something like that. I think just before World War II. So you got to consider the times. Having finished the book, and I did read the whole thing, I still do not know exactly what to make of the politically incorrect language, whether it was just the language of the times, whether it was the author's own derogatory language, or whether it was part of the story or the characters. I still do not really know what to make of it, but personally it never got to the point where it was making me want to quit the book, so it was never that bad. But I do have a pretty high tolerance level for this kind of stuff. So the only other thing I really have to talk about is the story and the characters. And neither of them really blew me away. I thought the book was largely just okay. Just the writing, the story, the characters, all that. It was really just okay. I can't really say there was anything especially good or great about it, but I can't... E either say there is anything really bad or poor about it. This is a book that all around I just felt it was kind of okay. And those are usually the hardest books to rate and review. And usually I give them two stars. But here's the thing, for books that are usually just okay, nothing good, nothing bad, usually I do get bored of it and wind up quitting just because it's not doing anything for me. That is not the case with this book. I did actually read this book all the way through. And what's more, I did actually enjoy it. Even though I do say that it was just okay, I can't really say what I really enjoyed about it because that's just the word that always comes back to me for books like this is okay. It's just okay plot, okay stories, okay characters. And I can't really use any better word than that to describe the book. It's just okay. But there are books that are okay, but not entertaining. This book was a book that was okay, but it was entertaining. I did enjoy reading about the characters, reading about the story, even though I can't really say what makes the characters or the story so good. It's, it just is. And so I find that very curious. Now, when I finish the book, when I have a book like this where I can't quite make up my mind what to think about it, what I will usually do is I'll check reviews on like Goodreads to see what other people think and 
I'll read, you know, one star reviews, two star reviews, three star reviews. And generally I will be able to see like, okay, I am agreeing more with one star reviews here or two star reviews or whatever. With this book, I do not really want to look up reviews. And I think the reason is, is because I still enjoyed the book pretty well, regardless of what other people may say. And what I think is important here is I think I would be very impressionable if I did read reviews. I think I could pretty much agree with most any review really from like one star books to five star. And what I think that would do is if I read a one star review for this book, I would probably think, oh, yep, that was the problem. That was a problem with this book. So I would think the book is a one star book. If I read a five star review of this book, I would probably see something I agree with and I would be like, oh, yep, that's it. This is a five star book. I agree with this. And so because of that, I don't really want to read reviews of this book. I just kind of want to leave with my own takeaways of it. And that was that I read the whole thing, which is pretty rare for me, and I enjoyed it. I will say though that this is definitely not a one star book. I mean, there's no way I could go with that because there's just nothing I could say I really disliked about it. And that's what one star reviews are for. So right off the bat, one star review is off the table. Two star, it could be there, I guess, because the book I thought was just okay. But generally, if I finish a book like I did with this one, I will give it at least three stars because I just do not usually finish books and give it two stars. Because I think if you can read an entire book, you must have liked it in some way. Otherwise, you probably would have just quit. So from that, you know, it's pretty much at least a three star review. So I could really go anywhere three, four or five star review. And I'm really torn on this, but what I'm going to give it is I've got to go with a five star rating. Okay, now there are two different types of five star ratings for me. One is a book that I absolutely love, like right here, The City of Dreaming Books by Walter Morris. Pure five star review, masterpiece, genius, love it, everything. I cannot really say that with The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. But here's the thing I can say about it is, even though I say there's nothing I can say that's especially good about it, neither is there anything I can say especially bad about it. And when that's the case, when there is just nothing I can really criticize the book for, the book must be pretty good, especially if I finish it, me of all people, because I do not finish all that many books. I don't know exactly what makes this book good or great, if it's that. But still, I think people should read this book. I can't quite know what to make of it, except that I did like it. I did read the whole thing. I do recommend it. So that's it. Anyway, that is it. The Heart is a Lonely Hunter by Carson McCullers. Five star rating. I enjoyed it. I do recommend it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.